Hello, I'm Kainton the Genius, and now I'm going to teach you quickly how to build a neural network in very few minutes uh, in Jupyter Notebook and um, um, Python using TensorFlow and Keras. So I'm going to click on New and choose Python 3. Now, this is a simple way, and this is how to build a neural network, uh, no matter how complex the network is. This is the procedure. I'm going to lay it out step by step. So the first step is to import TensorFlow and Keras. Import TensorFlow and Keras. Now, what are the data sites we are going to use? We are going to be using a data site available in Keras, and this data site is called the Fashion MNIST data site. So this is a data site that you use to recognize uh, different items of clots, and then you have you, you have a model built to recognize and be able to categorize the clots into uh, sneakers, into a cap, into a sandal, and stuff like that. So from TensorFlow, Again, I'd like to remind you to subscribe uh, to my channel if you've not subscribed. And if you have any challenges, let me know as well. If this has been informative for you, like it as well. So the first step is to import TensorFlow and Keras, and that is what I'm going to do at this point. So the second step is to try to uh, import the data from Keras and then load it into a variable. So I'm going to choose a variable named fashion data is equal to tf.keras.datasets.mnist. Now, there are other data sets available as well in, um, in, in, in the Keras uh, data sets, but for now, let's use the fashion data set. All right, so we have the Keras data set loaded right here. So if I execute this, if I'm not mistaking anything, fashion data, that is fine. All right, so at this point, the next thing I'm going to do is to load the fashion data. Now, the, this data set contains many, many data sets, but there is a data set here called the fashion data. So I'm going to extract this fashion data and split it into training data sets and test data sets. The syntax to do that goes this way, x train and y train. So I think this split is going to be 70% of the training data set and 30% for test data set. I can't remember exactly how to change this setting. Uh, X test and Y test uh, is equal to fashion data dot load dot load data. Okay. So what's going to happen is that this fashion data I have here is going to load up this data into the training data set made up of X and Y train and the test data set made up of X test and Y test. Remember that X train is the attributes while the Y train is the classes. All right. A similar similar uh, thing goes for the X test and the Y test. So I'm going to run it at this point. So it says can't assign operator. So let's see where we have an error. Um, okay. So this is not minus but underscore. Okay. So just run it. All right. So the data has been splitted up now into test data set and train, uh, training data set. So you can actually go ahead to look at x test, uh, x test dot shape. I think that is how to see how many data is available. Okay. So we have ten thousand, and for the training data set, I think there are sixty thousand of them. So I'm going to just check x train dot shape. I think there should be sixty thousand. So we have 60,000 for test data set and we have 60,000 for training data set. Now, this 60,000 items is made up of images that are 28 by 28 pixels. All right, so before we can do an analysis, we need to do something called pre processing. Pre processing simply means to prepare the data kind of to adjust it so that uh, it is to be able to be used in a neural network uh, training. So, what we are going to adjust at this point is the, the X values. That is the features that we want to use for making predictions. So X train and X tests. Y is what we are trying to predict. So X train and X test is equal to X train. We have to divide by 255 and also divide X tests by 255. So if you multiply 28 by 28, you are going to be getting 255. So, okay, so 
so this is pre-processing I just did now and okay so now this this the next step is very very important remember a network is made up of several layers this time I'm going to be using four layers of the network the first layer is the input layer takes the input data set then we have the second layer which is an activation layer we have the fourth layer which is a dropout layer and the final layer which is the output layer so let me model it so that you see how it goes so I'm going to say model is equal to tensorflow dot keras dot models dot sequential sequential I think this is the spelling okay all right so this is the first thing you do and we are going to create everything is going to come in between this place so you're going to specify the four layers uh, inside the sequential function because we are saying that these layers are sequential from the first layer to the last layer. Uh, they are all connected with two hidden layers inside in between and one input layer, one output layer. All right, so I'm going to define my first layer to be tf.keras.layers.flatten and the shape of the input, I'm going to specify input shape. Input shape is equal to 28 by 28. So at this point, instead of typing it out, I'm going to just paste it from my clipboards because I already have it in my clipboard. So I'm going to paste it. So now this is the first layer. For each of them, for instance, we have 60,000 items, each of them is 28 by 28. So we are presenting one item, 28 by 28. So the first layer have to be 28 by 28. The second layer will be 128, uh, uh, 128 um, uh, nodes. Then we have the dropout layer to take care of, uh, to avoid overfitting. And we have the last layer, which is 10, I, uh, 10 nodes at the last layer, which is a softmax layer. What all these things mean, we are going to be talking about it in details a little later. This is just a quick and data, and data way to build a neural network. So I'm going to run it at this point. It displays this, uh, this warning. You have to ignore it. All right. So the next nice thing you do after building your model is to optimize it, right? So to optimize the model, you need to simply specify um, the optimizer and also specify the loss function. So to do that, you have to compile your model using this thing. So model.compile and specify the optimizer. So I'm going to just do this. Optimizer. equals Adam okay so I think it's an adapt adaptive I can't, I, can't, I can't remember exactly the meaning the formula of this acronym so it's uh, specify the loss function to be sparse categorical cross entropy um, sparse underscore Make no mistake about it, this is how to build a neural network. network. No matter how complex a neural network is, this is exactly the procedure to build a neural network. Cross entropy. Okay, so finally we have the metrics. What we are interested in is the accuracy. You want to improve the accuracy of this model. So I'm going to specify the metrics as accuracy. So as we are training this model, we are monitoring the accuracy to see when it reaches a maximum accuracy. So I'm going to run it at this point. So I think our model is perfectly okay now. So finally, I'm going to use the training data set to train my model. After which I'll now list, I'll now check the accuracy of this model. So to train this model using the, the training data set, I simply say model.feed and pass in the training data set, which is X train and why train is as easy as that and also you need to specify how many presentations uh, you need to give this your your, your data uh, into this model um, that is called epoch epoch so let's say five the more the epochs the more accurate the model becomes right so let's train 
at this point. So training actually takes a few seconds. So model the speed uh, X train, Y train, epox is equal to five. Let's see. So it says invalid metric TensorFlow. Let's see. Pass categorical cross cross entropy. Okay, so optimizer is a for the Adam. Model of compound optimizer is a for the Adam. Loss is a for to pass categorical cross entropy. Okay, so I think let me see. So it's given a, a, an error somewhere. Invalid argument metric passed to k function is tensorflow function. Metric accuracy, okay. So I think this is fine. Let's see. Um, okay, so let's see. Model that fits S train, X train, X train, Y train, Fbox is equal to 5. Mm. Invalid argument metric. Okay, actually, it is metrics, not metric. So it's going to be metrics. Okay, so just run and run. So at this point, it's going to take a few seconds. You can actually see it training and then uh, gradually improving in accuracy for each epoch. Now I have epoch one of five. So for each epoch, it's going to run. Uh, present this 60,000 data into the network for each of the epoch and it's going to do it for five times. So what I want you to be looking at is the, the, the how the accuracy and the loss is changing. So we have accuracy of 82% is increasing to 83. The loss is reducing and that is what is expected at this point. So let's see, let's give it a few seconds and let's see. Now you can see that the last epoch is running and the accuracy is attaining a maximum of 97.68. You can see 97.68 is the accuracy the model reports to us. But we need to actually evaluate the accuracy using the test data set. Using the test data set. So I'm going to use model.evaluate and specify the test data set as the test data set as SX test and y y test so using this test data set what is the real accuracy of this model will this still be 97 percent we don't know uh yeah so we have 97.75 actually it performed better on the test data set than on the training data set i hope this is not some kind of overfitting for meanwhile we've completed building a neural network and our neural network, which is actually, this is what the neural network is, this model. I can easily give it any new data set and allow it to make a prediction that we are going to be exploring later in, the, in this other series of videos. I'd like to stop here. I'd like to recommend you do this by yourself. And I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember to hit the subscribe button and also leave me a comment if this has been informative for you.